Good afternoon. We'll start. First of all, I'd like to welcome all to this pep talk. Please mute yourself, but, but always show your video picture. Sign in your name, your Facebook account, and email address in the chat box. Please include names of, the compa of your companions attending with you. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the uh, pep talk is on. There will be a group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk. Please show your face during the picture taking. Another reminder, please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise or OLETE for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate like this. The link has been placed in the chat box as well as in the uh, Viber and page, uh, Facebook page. Another reminder, 50 OLETE certificates will entitle one to free voucher for RO Hoson telemedical consultation. Let's now have a group picture taking before we start the pep talk proper in two minutes. Please show your face. Okay. Get set, everybody in. One. One, two. Okay, last call. One, two, three. Okay. I have a uh, patient empowerment program in which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. There are three courses in the PEP talk. I completed the core course in October 9, 2021. And then from October 23, 2021 onwards, I've been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may take three years or longer. Last uh, March 19, 2022, we started with the uh, disorder course on abdominal disorders. Okay. So I started with the uh, abdominal disorders and overview in which I uh, mentioned about five common abdominal disorders, namely abdominal pain, abdominal mass, abdominal obstruction, abdominal bleeding, and jaundice. We have tackled the four, uh, four pep talks on pain, mass, obstruction, bleeding. So today we will tackle jaundice. So my pep talk today is entitled Fundamentals and Generalities in the Medical Management of Jaundice, an overview. This is part of the health disorder course and the empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an understanding of the fundamentals and generalities in the medical management of jaundice. Definition of terms in the title and the limitation of coverage of my talk. The word fundamentals to mean simplest and essential facts and theories which can serve as a basis or foundation and support for advanced and future information. Generalities, general statements of information not covering specifics and not too detailed. Medical management means diagnosis and treatment usually done by physicians. The content of the uh, pep talk today on jaundice will be the following. What is jaundice? What are the different types? What are the different causes? How common? Clinical diagnosis, paraclinical diagnostic procedure, and basic treatment modalities for jaundice. So what is jaundice? 
Jaundice is the yellowing of the skin, the mucous membranes. When you say mucous membranes, these are the ones lining your, your mouth, okay, the pink one, okay, the whites of the eyes. Okay. So there's yellowing of these uh, three parts because of a high level of a substance called bilirubin, which is a yellow orange bile pigment. That's why it gives a yellow color. Okay. So among the three parts, jaundice is usually first noted in the whites of the eyes. Later on, you can have also yellowing of the skin and also yellowing of the mucous membranes. Okay. So the easiest to spot would be the one on the eye. What are the different types of jaundice? There are so many different ways of categorizing the types of jaundice. One categorization is adult jaundice and neonatal jaundice. Neonatal jaundice means uh, the presence of jaundice at birth. Okay? Adult means after birth. Okay? Another categorization is uh, prehepatic. So be mean, hepatic means liver. Okay. Hepatic jaundice means jaundice at the level of the liver. Post-hepatic means after or after the level of the jaundice. I will explain this later on. Another categorization is uh, whether the jaundice is uh, surgical, meaning it has to be treated with an operation, or if not, it's called a medical jaundice. So these are the uh, usual categorization of physicians, no? especially the surgeons. Okay? Another categorization is uh, obstructive and non-obstructive. Usually, obstructive is the same as surgical. It needs surgery. Okay, no non-obstructive there mean there is no obstruction that, that that in the biliary tree that can cause the jaundice. Okay? So in this pep talk, I will not talk about neonatal jaundice. No? I will just focus on adult jaundice, and then I will uh, probably uh, I will talk on this cover this tree, especially obstructive jaundice, which is, as I said, usually it's a surgical jaundice, non-obstructive jaundice, medical jaundice. Okay. Adult jaundice means it's occurring in adults. Surgical jaundice means that the cause of the jaundice needs an operation for treatment. Non-medical jaundice, the jaundice in which the cause is usually not treated by an operation just observe or some medicines. What are the different causes of jaundice? As I said, bilirubin is the one accumulating there and the bilirubin is made during the normal breakdown of the red blood cells. So the uh, dead cells usually go to the liver and then there's a breakdown of the uh, red cells and then it gives the bilirubin substance. And this substance will have to pass through the common bile duct into the intestine. So the reasons for the buildup of the bilirubin are the following. There are too many red blood cells dying or breaking down going to the liver. That's why it's called prehepatic. Now before it goes to the liver, there's a breakdown of too many cells. And this is usually seen in patients with blood disorders. Diseases of the blood in which there is easy breakdown of too many red blood cells dying. No? Then the other reason is the liver is overloaded, okay? especially when the liver is damaged also. Okay? So the bilirubin is uh, overloaded in the liver. That's why it's called hepatic jaundice at the level of the liver. Okay? So the cause in prehepatic is before it goes into the liver stage states of liver breakdown. Okay? And then the other category is post-hepatic, meaning it has, the bilirubin has passed through the liver, then after that, it, ha it has to go out, okay, go to the intestine. So the third cause is that the bilirubin from the liver is not able to properly move into the digestive tract through the biliary tree, or the so-called common bile duct, the bile ducts. So prehepatic, hepatic, and post-hepatic jaundice. So examples here, prehepatic will be hemolytic jaundice, a blood disorder, 
hepatocellular jaundice such as uh, cirrhosis, uh, okay, hepatitis, okay, infection of the liver, then post uh, hepat hepatic jaundice will be the obstructive jaundice caused by stones, tumors, etc. So, as I said, the other categorization is that uh, this medical and surgical, usually the obstructive ones are the surgical jaundice. Medical jaundice are those in the liver area as well as before the liver, okay, medical jaundice. Okay. So causes of uh, too many red blood cells dying, as I said, blood disorders, examples of those in the, at the level of the liver, you have hepatitis, then you have drugs that can cause toxicity to the liver, and then cirrhosis, okay. and then in the post-hepatic uh, jaundice, you can have stones and tumors in the common bile duct and tumors in the pancreas. How common is jaundice? Quite common because we have all these diseases uh, occurring in our community, hepatitis, cirrhosis, drug-induced pancreatic uh, tumors, and gallstones. So since these are common, you can also have jaundice as a common event. Clinical diagnosis of jaundice. So a starting point in evaluation of a patient, adult patient, okay. let's start with a patient, adult patient having jaundice, okay? Yellowing of the white of the eyes. So tips in how to do the clinical diagnosis. We have to make use of the history taking to get the symptoms and do the physical examination to get signs. And then we process this data to get to a clinical diagnosis. The minimum or the basic data needed in the history taking, the symptoms is, we ask first, when was the jaundice noted? Okay. And then what's the subsequent course? Is it subsiding? Is it progressing? Okay. And then what are the associated symptoms like fever, like abdominal pain? Okay. So these are important data that will be used for the evaluation to come out with a clinical diagnosis. As to the physical examination, we try to get signs. Okay. So basic data, we look and palpate. We look for any bulbs in this area, in the abdomen. We look for any distension. Enlargement of, distension means enlargement of the abdomen. Then we palpate for a mass. Okay. Because sometimes we cannot see the bulbs by, by looking, but we can feel the mass, so there's a mass. Then we also feel for the tenderness or pain on the abdomen. So these are the basic data needed for the, uh, for the uh, to come out with a clinical diagnosis. So look for cues for a specific cause or disease causing the, the jaundice. Sorry for this typo. Okay, so you, you identify this, the disorder and then you try to look for the specific cause. In trying to look for the specific cause, we use the pattern recognition of a particular disease and prevalent process in those with similar presentation of symptoms and signs. So palpate for a mass in the right upper quadrant and epigastric region as a possible cause. <coughs> so if there is a mass, most likely that's the cause. If there is no mass, look for symptoms suggestive of hepatitis, gallbladder disease, with stones in the biliary passage, or pancreatic disease. Determine whether the jaundice is obstructive or non-obstructive based on the symptoms and signs. Non-obstructive usually are those med labeled, categorized as medical jaundice, usually hepatitis and cirrhosis. And those which are categorized as surgical jaundice are those caused by stones and tumors. So some case illustrations, starting point, presence of jaundice. So once you have a patient with jaundice, start thinking, what is the specific cause? Start asking, what is the specific cause? Is it obstructive jaundice or not? Okay. So, with the signs and symptoms, we analyze further all this data until we get to a specific cause of the jaundice. If there is a palpable mass, 
to the epigastric and right upper quadrant, most likely it is the cause of the jaundice. Obstructive jaundice is usually a surgical jaundice needing operation. And the mass here, once you palpated the mass, it can be a mass in the pancreas, the pancreas is here, or the liver. Or sometimes the other organs will be involved, like the gallbladder can also be involved. If there is no palpable mass, but even if there's no palpable mass, you don't rule it out because a non-palpable mass is still possible because it might be too small to be palpable. Okay? And likewise, you think of the gallstone also as this is quite common in this area. Okay? Non-obstructive cause, causes like uh, hepatitis, cirrhosis are all possible possible considerations. So since it's not easy to, die, to, ident <coughs> to identify the specific cause, diagnostic procedure, usually an ultrasound is needed. Viral hepatitis should be considered if there is history of fever before the onset of jaundice. Okay. So this is very important, the sequence. Okay. Fever before the jaundice usually hepatitis, viral hepatitis. Drug-induced hepatitis should be considered if there is history of intake of drugs that are notorious, sorry, sorry for this typo, notorious for development of jaundice. So paraclinical diagnostic procedure for jaundice. The uh, common instrumental and laboratory diagnostic procedures for jaundice are the following. Imaging procedures like x-ray, plain or with contrast dyes, ultrasound, CT scan, MRI, PET scan, etc. Endoscopy, usually upper endoscopy, usually. Okay. And then blood tests, CBC, liver function tests, and tumor markers. For the jaundice, usually ultrasound of the hepatobiliary tree is the initial diagnostic procedure. It's the most cost-effective. You know? So not the blood test. Okay? The blood test will just show you elevated bilirubin level, and it will not be able to tell you specifically the cause. The ultrasound can, can give you more information than the blood test. Ultrasound of the hepatobiliary tree can give the following information. The presence or absence of tumors in the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, which are commonly affected in patients with jaundice. Presence or absence of stones in the gallbladder and common bile duct and hepatic ducts. The presence or absence of unusual or abnormal dilatation of the common bile duct because if the common bile duct is dilated even though if there is no stone you will have to suspect an obstruction okay so obstructive jaundice is suspected if there is a tumor stones and dilatation of the common bile ducts so this is how we we, we interpret the results of the ultrasound the uh, foremost indication for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure can be stated this way. If you are not certain of the primary clinical diagnosis and you need to be more certain before the treatment, then go for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure. To decide on indication of the paraclinical diagnostic procedure, the physician uses two processes. The degree of certainty on the first diagnosis, first clinical diagnosis, or the so-called primary clinical diagnosis, and the comparison of treatment plans for the first and second, or primary and secondary clinical diagnosis. As a rule, there is no need for a paraclinical diagnostic procedure if you are quite certain, okay, especially for the doctor who's quite certain of their clin primary clinical diagnosis, and the treatment plans for the primary and secondary diagnosis are the same. The competencies required of physicians managing jaundice because there are a lot of diagnostic procedures that can be done. So the physician should know the uses and indications of all known diagnostic procedures for jaundice, then use them as needed and indicated. They try to select the most cost-effective one using the BRCA process and know how to interpret the results. 
So this is an example of the table that shows the BRCA process. B stands for benefit, R risk, C cost, A availability. The basic treatment modalities for jaundice. So on this table, you can see you list down the specific disease and then categorize them, whether they are usually surgical or potentially surgical or non-surgical in terms of treatment. Surgical means the, uh, that particular disease condition needs an outright surgical treatment. Non-surgical, the uh, non-surgical at the moment, okay, but usually there's no operation that is needed okay, okay. non-surgical at all times but no operations needed this is what is meant by non-surgical i'll give you examples of this potentially surgical is that it's non-surgical at the moment and then but surgery might be needed in the very in the future okay whether soon or later so examples of uh, conditions that causes jaundice that needs outright surgical treatment will be those with obstructive jaundice caused by stones. Then those caused by tumors such as in the pancreas, but outright surgery means it assumes that the tumors is still resectable, okay, operable. If the tumors is causing obstruction, but it's not operable, then we don't operate. So it's not, it's not, uh, it does not fall under this category, outright surgical treatment. The uh, surgical treatment being used for this type of condition, these types of condition will be, we remove the cause of the jaundice, okay, this is example, the cause, uh, the stones, and the tumors, okay. Or if you cannot be remove that, those two, you bypass, if it's causing obstruction, you bypass the, the uh, obstruction, and you try to drain the obstruction also as another measure, okay? Now, examples of potentially surgical treatment in which watch and wait stance is, better, is a better option and in which medical management can be tried. Example, you have inflammation and infection causing obstructive jaundice, okay? Sometimes inflammation can cause obstructive jaundice, but once you... Uh, once infection subsides, then it, it, the, uh, there will be no obstruction anymore. Asymptomatic gallbladder stones treated with watts and weight, but which can cause obstruction in the future. Okay, so these are examples of potentially surgical treatment. Examples of conditions that will, uh, will be considered as uh, the treatment, of the treat in which the treatment will be an outright non-surgical treatment will be those uh, with so-called medical jaundice. No? Example would be drug-induced hepatitis, viral hepatitis, cirrhosis. So we don't operate on this three. We just observe. We just give medicine. Okay. So this is uh, an example of the uh, BRCA process, a table showing that. BRCA process in selecting the cost-effective treatment modalities. As I said, there are a lot of options that, have, that, are, that are present okay, in the treatment of a particular disease. Then the choice will be uh, gotten after analyzing these four benefit, risk, cost, availability. So in summary, a takeaway in this talk, I have uh, tackled what is jaundice, what are the different types of jaundice, what are the causes? Well, how common is jaundice? Clinical diagnosis, paraclinical diagnosis, and treatment modalities of jaundice. Takeaway in relation to patient empowerment, be always in touch with reliable medical information on fundamentals and generalities in medical management of jaundice. Knowledge is power, it gives power. Use the four case of patient empowerment, kaalaman, kakayanan, karapatan, and kapangyarihan to gain greater control over decisions in the medical management of jaundice. So with that, I end my pep talk. I hope I have empowered you to have a better understanding of the uh, fundamentals and generalities of the medical management of jaundice. Before we go to the question and answer portion, let's, uh, let me remind everybody to take the olete Again, take the olete to pass it. 
and then 50 OLETIS certificates equivalent to one voucher for it. RO Hoson Telemedical Consultation. So let's now have a group picture taking before we go to the question and answer portion. Okay. One, okay. show your face. One, two, one, two, three. Okay. I'll just save it for us. Okay, the floor is now open for questions, interactions, and comments, suggestions, etc., consults. Any questions? How many have experienced jaundice before? How many have hepatitis before? Good for you if you don't have hepatitis. I suppose all of you have not experienced having a uh, gallstone that caused jaundice. Lapa. Sana wala. So, any questions if you want to ask? There is nothing at the chat box. You still have uh, 30 minutes. You have seen patients with jaundice before? Yes. All of you. Okay, so you know what jaundice is already. It's also present in mga baby, but usually a newborn. In newborn, uh, after birth, they have given when they have jaundice. That's that's a uh, that's an alarm already for the mat for the parents. Because that jaundice could either be uh, the so-called neonatal jaundice because of just uh, what you call uh, just because of uh, some some hemodynamic problem, or the other one is that there is a biliary tract obstruction, makami congenital anomalies causing obstructions of the bile duct, na so. Kung uh, yung yung isa lang yung unit, kumisang it could also be due to sepsis, na no? sepsis causing jaundice, na no? kung yun lang, sand madaling gumutin lang yon. Pero if if it's caused by uh, obstruction, by congenital anomalies, then the baby has to be operated on. Pero it's that it's that so common. Biliary atresia ang tawag ko. Biliary atresia. Um, Jocelyn T says, parang when I was young, I had a jaundice episode. I guess I get well. Medical. I guess I got well. In close parenthesis, medical jaundice. Good. That's medical jaundice when it got well by itself, no? without any surgery. No? Okay. Baka, you can, can you recall whether it's uh, hepatitis? You had fever? Okay, parang hepa, yeah, okay. So, the other common cause is the drugs, drug intake. Yeah. Because almost all the drugs that we take in through the mouth will pass through the liver. Okay, more for metabolism. Yeah, yung sinasabi ng paracetamol, you don't take, don't take an overdose because it can uh, cause uh, some liver failure. Na? Okay. Any more? Follow up from um, Jocelyn D. I just learned this afternoon that my case was a medical jaundice. Thank you, Doc. Okay. 
No, Chuchi was raising his hand or her hand. Okay, Chuchi. Yeah, Ate Chuchi is raising okay. her hand. Uh, Doc, I just want to know if uh, neonatal babies who have joined this, um, are, are these the ones who are exposed to the, some kind of light? Yeah. Ah, yon. Yeah. Because I see them often. I, I, yeah. I encounter a lot of babies with... Uh, being exposed to light. Yeah, but uh, the jaundice that the uh, the baby babies have are you will say non non surgical, non surgical. They're just waiting for the uh, for the uh, baby to grow a little bigger to to uh, no, to compensate. No? okay, uh, okay. But if it's surgical jaundice, meaning that uh, the the baby needs an operation to relieve the uh, obstruction, then those uh, lights are not are not uh, useful are not effective no? okay thank you yeah any more any more about the jones the stones oh, okay so i have a question go ahead no? go, go ahead maria yes yeah. so, yes yeah. Dr. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, I lost a friend. Um, kidney, ho. Her, prob her, her problem was kidney. Her, her kidneys okay. just stopped functioning already. But we noticed, because we were in college together, uh, we noticed that before she was diagnosed with that kidney, wala na, she, she turned yellow. Uh, that's why we were telling her, uh, uh, Mon Montserrat, Montserrat, you, you're you're very yellow. She, she was very fair, but she, she it was very distinct. She she turned yellow. But a month after that, then she stopped going to school. We we found that that she was already in hospital, and uh, she did have a kidney transplant, but it it did not work out well, and she died uh, eventually because both her kidneys gave out. Is that was that John this or just? Build up of urine. Uh, okay. So when you when you see a patient has jaundice, you you have to uh, number one to make sure that really have, the patient has jaundice. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So jaundice is usually uh, ang pinaka validating examination is that you have elevated bilirubin level. No, mm -hmm. sa, sa blood, no? okay. Mm -hmm. So, but short of that, just by looking at the patient, no, okay. So you you can tell, but uh, there will be some percentage of error because of interpretation, mm -hmm. no. And so I, when I when I see a patient, who, sometimes patient says, "I naninilaw ako," no, naninilaw mm -hmm. ako, no. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they look at the hands, diba? at the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I usually ask them how, and then I look at their eyes, na if it's jaundice or not. If it's not jaundice, I go, ah, it's not. Hindi ka talaga jaundice, na okay. Mm -hmm. so the the eye is the first one to annoy. The white of the eye is the first one to get the uh, yellowish tinge, na. Then I reinforce it with saying, ah, uh, komostang ihi mo, na anong kulay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's a uh, pea colored, parang a little brownish, mm -hmm. na then. Most likely, the patient has jaundice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yung skin is not so, ano, it's not so accurate. Pero, kung talagang severe na yung jaundice, mataas na mataas ng levels, talagang maninilaw na talaga yung pati kamay. No? Okay. So, those are the two things that I ask to verify. The eyes and the, the urine. No? Okay. So, urine naman kasi, you don't actually... Uh, I have to see the call the, the urine itself. Because if you mm -hmm. ask the patient, anong kulay? Ah, ah di ko alam nga nga. <laughs> so I didn't uh -huh. determine, di ba? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, so I really Pero don't know. When you when there's something wrong with your kidneys, do you do you turn? Does your skin turn yellow? Uh, the, yeah, yellow. Because she it was very bad. Because I mean, she did not survive barely. Three months after that, she she had gone. So it her kidneys were really in a bad way already when we noticed the change of color in, on her skin. It's then possible. It's possible. It it has a complication of the kidney. 
complications of the kidney in terms of, let's say, infection all over the body, sepsis. So when yeah. you have sepsis, no? infection of the blood all over the body, you can also have jaundice. No? Okay. So yes, sa kanya, if the history is just uh, short na, sandali lang, at uh, the deteriorate na, no? the, yeah. oh. most likely baka may sepsis na rin siya doon. No? Mm. It's so strange. She she never complained about any pain or anything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I have a question. Yeah. Um, can you can John this be uh, if it is not manifested in your eyes or in the skin, can it be determined in doing some lab uh, laboratory tests? Yeah. You believe how can it be avoided? I you know. The avoidance is another story. Your first question, Mo, whether it can be uh, detected in other outside the eyes. No? Mm -hmm. so you can have a blood test. We call that the level of bilirubin. Okay. Level BBIB, direct bilirubin and indirect bilirubin. Okay. Okay. The direct bilirubin is the one that's uh, na, na breakdown na to the manas liver. No? So it's called direct. Indirect the blood, the bilirubin has not gone through the liver yet. No? Okay, hindi pa never break down. No? So if we have elevated indirect bilirubin, that means prehepatic yon, no? before it goes inside the liver. We categorize it as prehepatic, pre-liver. If it's uh, mas matas yung direct bilirubin, most likely obstructive jaundice na yun. No? Okay. Padaan na eh. No? Okay. So uh, how to avoid... How to, pero okay, make, kumisan may mga laboratory errors din yan, ha? hindi nagjajive before I go to the avoidance. No? Okay. Like all lab exams, no? make sh you have to correlate it with the clinical findings. If the patient is not yellow, naman, totally not yellow, medyo mataas lang yung BB or IB. No? Okay. So you can, you can have it repeated. No? Okay. Baka may laboratory error lang yan. No? Okay. But okay. If, if the patient is really madilaw na, no? then tama yung ano, elevation. So, so the, other, the other lesson there, kung, kung do, you have to, do you have to take the uh, DBIB if you see a patient jaundice? Usually, hindi na. No? Sayang lang. No? Siguradong elevated na. Eh, no? Okay. okay. Nakita mong madilaw na. Unless you really want to know anong cause. Is it prehepatic or posthepatic? No? Ganon. No? Okay. As to the avoidance of jaundice, it depended on the cause. No? So, so, pag may tumor causing the uh, jaundice, well, uh, the, the only way to avoid the jaundice is to remove it before it causes jaundice. Diba? Okay. Example, if you have tumor in the pancreas, no? malit pa, hindi pa nagkakos ng jaundice, no? tanggalin na. Okay? So, kung lumaki na yung pancreatic tumor at uh, iniipit na yung common bile duct, no? then, well, the jaundice will be uh, will, will will develop already. No, so the only way to uh, relieve the jaundice to remove to remove the tumor. Another cause will be the uh, stones. The stones again. You're talking about avoidance. Mahirap avoiding tumor. Mahirap avoiding stones. No, stones is at the moment we don't know the real cause. No, may mga people prone to develop goals. When you say stones, these are usually stones coming from the common, uh, gallbladder. No? Gallbladder stones yan. Yung, yung dumadaan sa common bile duct. Pag, dumaan sa, pag lumusot siya sa, sa cystic duct, from the gallbladder to the common bile duct, yun, maninilaw. But if the stones are just inside the gallbladder, hindi ka maninilaw. Hindi ka maninilaw. No? So yung, uh, yung stones na bumaba dun sa common bile duct, that's the one that will cause the jaundice. No? As to the how to avoid, we don't know. I guess the best way is just to eat, to drink a lot of water, to avoid a healthy, healthy diet na lang. No? And then just pray and hope that you don't develop the gallstones. No? Okay. Now, ano pa yung mga possible causes you're talking about avoidance? Of course, hepatitis. You try to avoid hepatitis, di ba? Okay. okay. Get away from people who are in, have hepatitis or have a hepatitis vaccination now okay. okay so basically those are the you know, hepatitis 
hepatitis, tumors, and stones. No? Okay. Uh, doctor, about the hepatitis vaccination, is that lifetime or you need to get it again <laughs> after two years, three years? I, like I, I'm not sure now, no? but uh, because I've not, uh, I've not repeated it also. No? So, yes, so one many years ago. It can be once or just like any vaccine, probably most likely it, it, it has to be repeated after so many years. No? I'll check on that. I'll check on that. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Another one, is hepatitis and jaundice interrelated? Meat or yes. fat? Can it be, hepatitis can be acquired through eating street foods? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hepatitis, when you have hepatitis, so hepatitis means you have infection of the uh, liver. I mean, okay. itis, hepa is liver, itis is inflammation, right? hepatitis. Okay. So there are different causes of hepatitis. You have uh, viral hepatitis, which is the uh, yung mga, yung mga, um, tawag doon. That's just called hepatitis virus, hepatitis virus. No? Yung mga, mga virus no? that would cause the uh, hepatitis. Then you can also have drugs. When you have drugs, no? you can also have inflammation of the liver, so you, you can have hepatitis, di ba? Okay. So, um, so uh, that's how they are related. No? But it doesn't mean that once you have hepatitis, you will always have jaundice. No? Baka, baka mild lang yung hepatitis mo. Okay. Example, mild mild hepatitis lang, no? viral hepatitis, you won't have clear-cut jaundice. No? Medyo masakit lang probably yung, yung liver mo. No? Yung pag tinatch mo yung liver, baka medyo masakit because of inflammation. No? Okay. But uh, let's say drug, drug usually, may hepatitis, silent, uh, medyo masakit lang yung chen mo, pero wala kang paninilaw. No? Wala pa. No? So that's how you interrelate the hepatitis from the jaundice, no? Okay. So whether you can get food from the uh, vendor, yeah, there's such there, there are so many types of hepatitis, eh. hepatitis B, hepatitis C, hepatitis A, diba? Okay. May mga foods that are prone to develop, eating those can develop hepatitis A, no? Or B, or, or C, diba? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any more? At the moment, the most common cause of jaundice in the adults is still the stones. No? Gold stones, wababa, into the gold common balda. No? Okay. Then after that, I doctor. Uh, okay, I have a cholecystiasis. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. From my ultrasound, will that cause me jaundice sometime or what? If it's cholecystolytiasis, means uh, there are stones in the common uh, in the gallbladder. In the gallbladder, not inside the common bile duct. No? Okay. Dali, ha? Let's do it. Gallbladder. Intestine na ito, ha? Ito yung pancreas dito. Pancreas. Gallbladder. So, if you have stones, lumulutang-lutang dito yung mga stones mo. Okay. So, that's cholecystolithiasis. No? Cholecysto. Cholecyst is gallbladder. Lithiasis, bato. Lithiasis. Okay. Kung lumulutang-lutang lang dito, you won't have job days. No jaundice. Okay? Now, kung bu buwaba yung bato rito, lumusot, no? so you will have, kasi 
yung mga bile is coming from the ano eh, di ba? From the liver. Pababa okay. siya. Okay, dapat pumasok siya sa intestine. Di ba? Intestine ito. Okay. So, the bile is there to help in the digestion of mga fatty foods na pinakain natin. No? So, kung di siya makalusot, lalaki ito. Di ba? Mm. Lalaki yan. Okay. It is 10 yan. So, ibig sabihin, barado. Di ba? Kasi uh -huh. nag-accumulate yung, yung uh, nag-build up yung pressure pababa. Di ba? Okay. So, in such a case, you have jaundice. Ganon. Okay. Kung sa, dito lang sa gold ladder, no jaundice ka. No, wala. No? Okay. Ayon. Kung dito naman, aside from the stones, kung meron pang gold, pancreatic tumor dito, ayan, malaking tumor, pinabara yung daanan ng common bile duct, no? hindi makalusot yung mga bile, then lalaki din ito. No? So you can have jaundice. Okay. Let's get it. Thank you. Any more? So next, uh, next, next lecture pep talk would be on right upper quadrant pain and gallbladder disorder. I'll expand on that more in next week. No? Okay. Any more question on John this? Lana? Easy ba? Easy ba yung topic? <laughs> so if there are no more questions, uh, okay. It's almost three, but if you may remain pahabol, okay lang. Na? Okay. So we'll call it a day. Lana, wala nang pahabol? So far, wala nang. May question si Lorne. Okay, Lorne. My question kang Lorne. Oh, uh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Okay. So if there are no more questions, let's call it a day. We will. Uh, I will prepare for the next topic. It's right upper quadrant. Okay. Uh, with and with uh, police with gallbladder disorder. With gallbladder disorder. No. Okay. So. Okay, let's call it Thank a day. You. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see each other. Thank you week. and bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Vote wisely. Happy voting. Happy voting. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye, Paul. -bye. Bye,